Digital generation is a powerful tool for generating a lot of randomized content without having to curate all individual pieces. It allows for a unique playing experience in games that do incorporate it. There are many different types of ways to proceed to generate content and there are many different games that utilize it. From, for example, Borderlands series, they simply randomize the weapons that drop, which result in an interesting playstyle of wanting to try to find a really good combination of stats and skills on your weapons. Others are more traditional, which is just developing a procedural map that has randomized buildings and all sorts of generated content. Popular ones like, of course, Minecraft had its primary gameplay is the procedural generated world, where the player is just dropped into the world and they do what they want and it's a sandbox like experience and each player's sort of world is unique as it's all randomized. Even games that you might not suspect have procedural generation, like Left 4 Dead 2 for example, is a linear game but it incorporates it where the gameplay changes depending on the player's performance and difficulty which can result in either an easier or harder experience and is the player cannot predict for that that it results in a more fun experience. And so should you incorporate procedural generation into your game it can be very enticing and just to give you an idea my background is that i did a whole master's research within procedural generation i did a whole program that was able to generate probably plants using sort of real data that i had gathered so i'd like to say that i'm i'm what i would consider a master in sort of the area i'm very familiar with the the upsides of procedural generation and sort of the downsides and issues with it I've also done videos on procedural generation, particularly with uh, my unique, more unique one, which was a randomized procedural generation racetrack, which I show here that I can flip through and it will randomly generate a sort of kind of track using various methods. So let's go over one of the main advantages you might want to incorporate is that it's just so well documented. It's been around for a very long time, really since games were first developed, as one of the main advantages is that you can generate a lot of content with little memory so the with a hard-coded level that has to be stored somewhere and a long time ago uh, when memory was so lackluster using math and, and various algorithms you could then generate it on the fly resulting in a, multiple levels without the user having to store it big games like for example daggerfall 2 you know that has many 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 dungeons and this game that on was something like 100 megabytes to install and that's because it just generated them when the player needed it and resulted in these randomized dungeons. Early Noise is probably the most popular example and it's almost one of those almost rite of passage that every language has a sort of noise algorithm made into it. It doesn't even matter how obscure it is, someone's probably made a library for it which is a great advantage of no such digital generation as well is that there is a package usually available for you to use, meaning you don't really have to program that specific algorithm in. You can just use it out of the get-go, resulting in a much smoother transition into using it. This game, Necesse, has a really good gameplay loop, which is based around seed generation, and it's of a more smaller studio. It generates an I a randomized island, nothing too big, and it's of a randomized biome. And the core gameplay loop is that the player builds a village, a town, they then go to the mines, which is all again procedure generated to mine resources, or to go to a different island to get resources. They come back, they then upgrade their town, and they keep doing that over and over again, and it results in a really nice, fun gameplay loop that the game has incorporated. And its procedural generation is nothing heavy. It's not like Minecraft where it's infinite. They've kept it to a more smaller scale, which is just a single island in that world. And then if you want to go to a different island, you just simply travel to the island. And that means that saves them a lot of issues that can happen when you do try and do a completely procedural generated world. Which is where I want to segue into my kind of first issue is that you can actually end up spending a lot of time on the procedural generation part and the actual developing of the game part. I've been working on a little project, like a little challenge that I'm gonna do for a video where I have a procedurally generated world that if I run, for example, here, and it looks kind of nice, I've got a little world. And what I've just been working on for the most time it's actually just this thing, getting it all optimized. With a procedure generation world, you really don't know what's going to happen and you need to account for those. You need to add restrictions and you need to add constraints so this doesn't generate budget worlds. Now for this, the world is of a limited size, not an unlimited one, but I've added methods such as chunking 
And I also have to tell the chunks what tiles they cannot render, what's out of bounds. You've got to add all these features that the player that the player might encounter in their world that you must account for. The way the trees are also generated, it must ensure that it generates on a, on a grass tile and it must fit within that tile as well. So a lot of the time I've just been spending is on this map generator rather than the actual gameplay loop that the game people will be enjoying and having fun with. So this generation can be this just gateway to a scope creep. It's like, oh, once you get into it, you're like, oh, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. And it is fun to implement, but what you end up doing is you're not actually developing a game, you're just developing this endless world that you generate. And it may you may lose that core gameplay loop you're actually striving for. And it can be hard to make a fun game out of pursuit generation because a pursuit generation, while it might be randomized, why I like to call it is like it's predictably random. Once you experience it once, you know what it feels like. Like with Minecraft, despite it being so like its core cool premise is randomization pursuit generation, it's once you know with the biome, once you've seen this grassy tree biome, you've seen it before. Like it doesn't it's not really gonna be different, it's just gonna be topologically different. Like, oh, it might have more hills, it might have to It'll be slightly different but the actual core what happens in it is going to be the same the same with the you know for example the snow button same trees and so on and so forth and actually it can be rather not fun or even actually repaired despite it being randomized this was the issue that we had well profess have with starfield was like yeah you had all these planets but they weren't really very distinct or there wasn't much didn't there to do you had buildings there that were n not necessarily different but the actual core like you went in you looted them it was the same thing as this other planet and so on and so forth despite them being all randomized they all felt very familiar and they would call it known as like you know as wide as the ocean as deep as a puddle meaning that yeah there's a huge look at this massive world the actual depth of it the actual stuff and the interesting things you can do can be very shallow there's actually not much a video i remember i saw you know a long time ago three years ago was this video how scope creek killed my game and this game go over the fact that what did kill it was the procedure generation. It's sort of this, it was this opening of the door that resulted in this person just investing so much time in the procedure generation part and completely forgot about the core loop. It's like, oh, I can now add this, I can add that, I can do this, I can do that. What if I did this? And you can really lose sight of what your game is meant to be if you add procedure generation. I would recommend maybe just starting smaller. If you do want to incorporate procedure generation, maybe have something like in Fallout 1 and 2 which were random encounters. These were just enemies that appeared at random when you explored the map, and it was just different random enemies on a already pre-generated world. So there was no, there was no randomization, there was no procedure generation world. The world was set as it was, but as we explored the world map, there was a chance that you would be come across a an encounter. It could be something good, like a bunch of just traders that you could talk to, or it could be a bunch of rages that you had to fight off or run away. And this added a danger to exploring the world, and they had certain areas where more dangerous enemies would appear, resulting in newer players having to try and avoid those areas so that that encounter didn't happen, or it encouraged them to go down and perhaps get the good loot that they had. That was a really nice uh, way of giving player a reward and, and risk management. And that another use of the procedure generation game is not as a really a map mechanic that's directly in the game instead of tool that you use for example procedure generating textures for your world or even models that can be used as for example like plants in this fantastic free book which is the algorithmic beauty of plants which shows you how to procedure generate plants for your world essentially as its theme goes through there how you can add randomization and actually you could generate these models and then place them in the world outside of the game so for example you have a tool that generates these models then you can just use them whenever and it might speed up your workflow process and they'll say perhaps make it publicly available just so it's a a nice experience people can use it outside of it as well and other issues with this generation is because they are randomized there is no guarantee that the output that you'll get is a desired output you can actually result in the player being soft locked and what is used for roguelike dungeons which is a binary space partition dungeon and it just splits the world into different chunks and then it connects them all and in such a case of like cave generation is that unless you don't properly vigorously check for it within the code that there is a chance perhaps the, the cave generates and it's completely locked off uh, there's the player can't get to the exit it's not been connected properly and what you've resulted in is a possible soft lock the player can't continue the game and the player possibly lose all their progress if they can't do so 
but there is a big risk of that and it's going to again extend the development time of the game because you've got to incorporate you got to make sure it's perfect you got to make sure well not necessarily perfect but you got to make sure that there is no situation where the player can't progress any further for example you the player generates in the room that they can't because anywhere else is completely block off uh, this is one of the issues with Daggerfall, for example, that the dungeons were so massive that certain areas were inaccessible and you could easily get lost within them and it resulted in a complete mess. You could reduce the size of these dungeons in now the Unity version, uh, which kind of fixes those issues, but perhaps a good approach is leave it for a sequel. Develop your game without the particular generation or a very smaller version and the, that feature that you want, maybe that new generation feature that can be part of a new game your next game that you once you've mastered your first one and you see hey look this this part was really fun my my familiarity with programming is done i've also got this game out and perhaps you're making a return on the money and people enjoy it and you're gonna click hey look i now can use my perfect example as either an update or dlc or a new sequel that uses that two generation feature that results in a nice fun uni new sequel to your game that adds a new experience uh, well, while Starfield, as you see, did get you know very mixed reviews, I do want to talk about how they did sort of have been taking this approach for a very, really long time. You look back at really their first Elder Scrolls games, how sort of more primitive they were, and then the next sequel they improve on it, and then the next sequel. Well, with Star Wars, you can still see that with that. It has features from Fallout 4, it has the base building, it has all the quest features that are previous in their other games, but now they've added more features on because they keep building on and on to it. It was a date, but it gives the idea that hey, because they kept building and iterating on it, it resulted in a, a much bigger game without really necessarily having to extend a super long development time. So, for example, trying to build Starfield from scratch without that knowledge that they previously had or all the code that they didn't, it would take so much more longer. There's actually a, a lot, a lot of lots of stuff in this game, and that was a result from them just constantly building on top of each game that they had before. So, overall, should you use procedural generation in your game? Well, it's up to you. It's a lot of fun. I like using it all the time. I like learning from it. I like adding all sorts of unique stuff. As you can see, nice little river coming through here in my little world using Perlin noise and just having different trees generating. You don't necessarily have to even produce a game. Maybe you just want to play around with it. Really, it's up to you. But I just thought I'd say what I think about it and, and the issues that you can come. It can just really be mainly issue. It can just be a big scope creep. You can really open a, a door to so many issues and problems. You may want to add too many issues. It can just be actually you you'd put in too much on your plate depending on your development team it's so that you could be like oh, man i gotta do all this and this and this i gotta think of how to play interact with the world blah 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 rather than i just load this world in that i've already pre-generated and then i can just you know deal with it like that that's my opinion what's your opinion what's your opinion on generation? Do, you, do you like it do you is it a tool you like working with if not then do comment down below so i'll just see you in the next one